Hi everyone, I'm Paula Clark from Bath Township. Uh, a couple months ago I was here and was sharing some of the upcoming events in Bath with you and one of them is starting this week. We have passed an ordinance creating a downtown development authority in Bath and this week on Thursday evening we're having a community reception in the downtown area, the old historic and very barren part of Bath. And we've invited the local community to come in and have munchies and talk about their vision of what that area should look like. And we've opened that up to the broader community and we hope that some of the people that will be coming will be from this area and we hope that you'll keep that in mind. It actually did get some coverage in the town courier this weekend which was a, a very welcome surprise and we hope that you'll take note of that and try to attend. We will be holding the second one on April 18th from 5 to 7 also. They're both Thursday late afternoons, early evenings and we'd welcome your input. Thank you.
everybody. Um, tonight we're going to start out with actually Deb Dillon, who is a parent at both um, Ralia and at Wilkshire, who brought fuel up to Play 60 to us. I think at last end of last year we started talking about it, and um, she's been, I think, the strong person behind this to get it going for both of us at Wilkshire and at Ralia. So she's going to tell you all about the program, and then. Steve's going to talk to you about the things that have been happening at Ralia, and I guess Gail's going to be talking about the things that are happening at Wilkshire. <laughs> Hi there. <coughs> so Fuel Up to Play 60, in case you're not familiar, is from the National Dairy Council, which they're the Fuel Up part, and the Play 60 part comes from the National Football League. So it's in... 70,000 schools across the United States and basically what it is is a program that the students take control over after we get it going and it's to increase the amount of physical activity during the day and also to improve healthy eating choices. They focus on low fat and fat free dairy, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and lean proteins. So um, the program offers $4,000 per year per school. You can apply for a grant. So we were awarded $500 for each Wilkshire and Ralia for this year. And we're going to be doing a, an assembly that is um, a Jump with Jill Rockstar Nutrition Show. So that will be, they will, that will be on May 15th, and that's kind of kick-starting the year for us. So um, we've introduced it to the schools. There's six steps that you have to follow in order to complete the program and to get the funds, and we've completed five out of the six steps. The last step is... Um, putting our success stories up on the website for others to read about. So Mr. Bladder is the program advisor for, Wil for Raya, along with myself. And at Raya, we have, a, we have Tina Glum as a program advisor, along with another lady, Crystal. And Crystal and I are the ones who are organizing it and applying for the funds and things like that. So. I think Mr. Bladdert's going to, Steve's going to talk about what we're doing at Ralia. Um, I have a first grader and a fifth grader. So my fifth grader's moving to the middle school, and my goal is to contact the middle school principal and see about getting it into the middle school for next year and then the high school for the following year. So I'm really into it. <laughs> At the time, she was two year old, three years old. Awesome. So, Excellent push ups, correct form. So, this is not a surprise. <laughs> I'm a personal trainer at the MAC. I have been for 13 years. So, I went back to school for nutrition and I'll soon be a registered dietitian. So, I'm really into helping um, the children, you know, make better choices. So, I'm invested in, in this program. So, I think it's a great program. Um, at Ralia, we, we kind of started with Deb, and our first main goal were, was getting the kids really involved and excited about it. We did a, our first play was a kickoff play where Deb had some of, uh, some of our fifth grade football players kind of put on a skit and get the kids excited. And throughout the course of the next couple of months, we ha now have 363 stu students, so pretty close to 90% of our students who have registered and are online. Um, using the, the web, their website there, um, and another about 12 adults that are also supporters um, through the school and parents. Um, and that the website that the kids use, they can do things like um, track their food and activity for throughout their days, um, see how you know many of the different food groups they're getting and how much activity and what activity they're getting each day. They can play, you know, there's. Um, there's different challenges they could do for different rewards, and I mean, even things like one of my kids said that they did 
touchdown dance where they can, you know, submit themselves doing a, creating a touchdown dance and <laughs> submit that. And they could have an NFL player if they win, you know, from like the Lions come to the school. Um, so just a bunch of fun things for the kids to, you know, to do. And Jack, of course, is our, our number one guy on that website. Right? He, he's, 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 you know, trying to get that along with a lot of the other kids. Um, we do have a student team that I meet with uh, about every other week or so. Um, typically, we try to do it on day seven in our rotation, which is almost every other week. Um, it's a, it consists of myself and eight students, one from a boy and a girl from every uh, from second, third, fourth, and fourth and fifth grades. Um, and we just bring th things to them to discuss, and to, you know, some they, they have ideas to share about, you know, what they think would be a good thing for Ralia. Um, things that we've done with those kids, we've. We've done one taste test so far for some breakfast foods that kind of go along with our new breakfast program at, at Ralia, um, and we've got a couple more that we're a couple more taste tests that we're planning here before you know in uh, in April. Um, we had just finished a, a, a presentation at our Monday morning meeting where the kids shared some healthy, kind of fun, healthy facts to you know share with the students, and uh, along with that presentation, they showed they did an example of a. About a one minute, two minute brain break, just to give some teachers some ideas, and we put some things on our shared drive for the for the teachers to take a look at. So when you know they just need to have a, you know, get the kids up from the desks for a minute or two, just to kind of refocus and get some energy going for the kids. You know, so we showed a couple of those, and um, I think we've got. I'd say probably close to half of them, you know, maybe half of our teachers that are doing that pretty regularly, you know, when they know that they're, they can just see their kids, you know, kind of drowning out a little bit, you know, to bring them, bring their attention back up. Um, and uh, lastly, we were real excited about the jump, Jumping with Jill or Jump with Jill presentation that we're going to have here in May. So that's kind of what we've uh, been doing so far with Ralia. Tina apologizes, she had a family emergency, so I'm Tina, or Gail, okay. yeah. Um, at Wilkshire, we have had to modify the program a little bit because um, with kindergarten and first grade, they, they don't have quite the same um, abilities in terms of the leadership and making being able to make um, the kinds of decisions that they've been asked to make in this program. So we have modified a lot um, and still feel like we are getting a whole lot out of this program. Um, they all had to take a pledge, they had a written pledge, and th this is the piece about going online and doing that. Well, we, we decided we would all just recite the pledge together at our kickoff. In December, we had a big assembly, we had a big kickoff, and so all the kids um, recited the pledge, and then we have this great big sign out in the hallway, and everybody signed it, so the, the saying that they were gonna try and follow the pledge. So that was, that was one of our big kickoff kinds of things. And, and the other piece we did was um, our activity focus and Steve talked about, Ralia does a lot of this too, is we call it a movement minute. And they do these every day, and all the classes do these. And they, we have them on our share drive, but we introduced that at our kickoff. So we actually showed them what those look like. And they're just little exercises that they do, marching in place, jump, jumpy jacks, um, some crazy dances. Um, we teach them the pony. I mean, some of the, you guys, some of you guys know that dance from, I can see your, yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yep. You so all no, yeah. I know that yeah. Great, but I remember that. Yeah. So all kinds of little activities just to like Steve said, just to get them worked up and going again and just kind of get their brain moving and their bodies as well. And then our teachers log these. Um, so that's part of our success story that we'll share at the end of the year as well. Um, as far as the nutrition focus is we started breakfast like all the other elementary schools did. And that's been going really well. We are serving between um, 70 and 80 breakfasts a day at Wilkshire. So that's, that's really pretty cool. And then we encourage healthy snacks in all of the classrooms. And that goes home in the newsletter. We just finished um, some of the classes just did um, Friday fruit day. So everyone was to bring a fruit for their snack. And we'll do um, different things where we'll have whole grain day or we'll have vegetable day. So we really do try and encourage those healthy snacks both the snack, they each have snack time, and when they bring them in their lunches. The other piece about our lunches is we've got new guidelines um, for lunches that just came out, and I put that on my, in my school newsletter to let parents know about that, and then we're trying to really encourage kids to make healthy choices because as part of their lunch, they get to choose 
vegetables and fruit as part of that fruit bar and food bar and um, it's amazing it's amazing the kinds of choices they make and I was a little skeptical I was thinking five-year-olds with tongs and watermelon <laughs> and apples it was just a you know disaster but they are amazing and um, they are it's great for fine motor and they do amazing jobs and they make good choices and they eat it you put ranch on anything and it will, it'll be eaten <laughs> but it, it really is it's been really good and it, it's kind of helped us to move toward the the healthy nutrition piece and You know, I think that, I would say yes, because I think the teachers are, are able to gauge when they kind of need a little break. And especially during long periods of instruction, they'll kind of see kids getting a little antsy if they're having to sit for a long time, and they'll just all of a sudden say, okay, everybody up. You know, let's do a movement break. So they use those opportunities, and then they can kind of settle back in to continue with the instruction that's going on. So I have seen a real positive for that. I think that... You know, during our 90-minute reading block, those are long blocks for kindergarten and first grade, well, for any of our kids. And I think sometimes we just need to break that up, and sometimes they break it up with two or three, depending on how the, how the class is doing. But I think the teachers are being, being able to read that in the kids now and offer that opportunity. We also have the Jump for Jill coming in May, and we will be going to Ralia to, um, to take part in that. Um, and then we're also applying for some more funds for, we have a fitness day at the end of the year for the snack and possibly even a football to give as our, usually we give um, either a Frisbee or we've had a, a visor. We're, we're trying to get footballs for each of our kids. So that's one of our projects that we're working on. Any other questions? Debbie, <laughs> it is very cool. It's on there's a website, and she has so much energy. And so, <clears throat> if you go to note to health .com, Say that again. note to health, N -O, N o t e t o health dot com. She's a registered dietitian as well as she has her own rock band, and as she says. She puts them together to create the rock star di or the world's greatest rock star nutritionist. And she takes like uh, ads how they they use ads to urge kids to eat, you know, junk food. She uses those same tactics to help them eat healthy food. It makes it fun and just puts on this whole assembly. And it's all about healthy eating, physical <coughs> physical activity. And she does. I, I saw her at a conference fell in love with her and she's all over the country so we applied for the money and it's fully funded so so she's coming here. she's coming well I wish it was her oh, okay. um, <laughs> it's her Midwest cast okay. um, but it's all the same material and the reason um they said the reason they funded us we only requested 300 for each school we really needed 500 and they funded us the full 500 because they like the idea that Will Wilkshire and Raya are working together and they think that you know there's good potential with the schools working together so they funded us for that but if you're available May 15th the first show is from 10 to 10:45 in the morning and the second show is from 1:30 to 2:15 and it's going to be half Wilkshire and half Raya for each show. So we're combining the students um, for each of those assemblies. So it should be fun. Debbie Kanoe, if, sure. if this were to go to the middle school, what does something like this look like at that level? So at that level, the content and the approach is just a little different. Um, and on the website, um, the Fuel Up to Play 60 website, I urge all of you to go on to there. It's you can either go fueluptoplay60.com or futp60.com. And if you sign up as a supporter and you select, you can search by zip code, it's very user-friendly. Um, and you can support 
Raya and Wilkshire. And then you'll have access to all of the materials that are on the website, which is great nutrition information and materials that schools can use. So the materials are geared towards the grade level. So, you know, they're trying to separate it so that it can be used at all levels. So, and my idea would be to get the students from the high school, mentoring the students from the elementary school, being involved in after school programs, you know, things of that nature, volunteering and things like that. So, you know, I'm trying to make it happen, but we started with two schools, and so we're well on our way. Do you find that parents are getting more involved in using the resources? And well, actually, one of the six steps, um, the second step, I believe, is drafting your team, and that includes your student team as well as your, your team within your school, which needs to include the principal, PE teacher, the food service director. So I've been working with Lita Hassinger, and she's been very helpful. Um, but our next step is the parents. So we're going to try and create an incentive for the students to try and get their parents signed up and create a competition among the classrooms, possibly within the school. Wh whichever classroom can get the most parents signed up by a certain date. We have lots of prizes that they give us for incentives. So we have, you know, T-shirts, pencils, backpacks. Uh, lots of things to try and encourage them to participate because it's not just you know us telling them it's really the students wanting to do it for themselves and then when they go home hopefully the parents supporting them in their efforts right And we also are doing a little bit of fundraising. We, we had our, um, our student team pick the items that they want to taste test, and we wrote a letter to Gordon's Food Service and to Meyer, and we're asking for 400 pounds of berries and <laughs> um, lots of berries, not 400, <laughs> 200 or no, 100, but lots of berries and yogurt, and um, we're not just asking our food service director to provide that. We're going out to the community and trying to get buy-in so that everyone's a part of it. So, any other questions? second to congratulate the cast and crew of uh, the play this weekend. Everything I ever learned, I learned in kindergarten. Um, congratulations to them. I'm a little biased, of course, um, having a student who was involved with that production, but everybody did a fabulous job, and it was a, an another great testament to have the public schools. I, I was went to that.
and he was on the big screen at Breslin you yeah. know, as they were showing all the, the student winners. So my son and I were watching the Class B fi uh, semifinals on Friday night and uh, saw him up there. And there it, was, he is. it was great. Essentially, um, the agreement's a three-year agreement, and um, in the first year, there's a um, uh, piece 
the, the, the majority of the um, contract um, involves steps, and so the steps are the recognition of movement of one of the lanes of certain employment groups, um, teachers being the largest one. Um, there's a recognition of steps, half steps in that group, and steps in the other groups. And so um, that's pretty much the biggest financial piece in addition to um, a change in insurance, a recognition of um, each of the groups making a change in insurance from a, a current traditional program to an HSA program, which saves the district money. Um, and part of that savings is um, put back into those, um, you know, to those steps and some other um, changes that I won't go through all of those. But that's the majority of the, the financial incentive piece. Um, and then in years two and three, we essentially have a reopening. expiring um, in August and actually the three year agreements, all the contracts now are on the same cycle and they will um, expire in June, June 30th of 2016. So all of our contracts align not only together but um, with our fiscal year end which is uh, ending June 30th. So that helps us in the way that we account for things. Um, and, and the reason you have reopeners, you want to kind of remind us of that? Well essentially, you know, we don't we don't have, you know, as I presented a couple board meetings ago, um, what our financials, at least what the governor's proposal, we don't actually have a school year bill yet for financials. And so um, built into um, year one is formulas, essentially, which says that if certain things happen, then that, that those funds are split amongst the group based on the percentage of kind of ownership of the total budget, so to speak. And so um, the two biggest ones are enrollment and foundational allowance. So set a target for our enrollment, and as that goes up above that target, then we share those dollars with all of our employee groups. Um, and then foundation allowance, similar to is that if the foundation allowance goes above what the target is, then those dollars are similarly spread amongst, amongst those groups in the final fashion. And there's some other little caveats in there, but that's essentially how that works. Um, and then years two and three, pretty much reopener for financials because we don't know what's going to happen. Ago, that's the way that we did it, you know, because of the financial uncertainty over the last several years. Um, you know, we've really not had a long term contract financially for several years now. And probably won't ever see it. And probably not, unfortunately, but that's just the way of the land, you know, until the state and, you know, state economy begins to um, stabilize to the point to where we can, you know, we've, we've not had a multi year budget back in the past. Um, there were years where we actually had the state would pass a two year budget, so you knew what. Projections, I think that we're looking at break even based on the contract. You know, um, there again, that's based on things that we don't know now, kind of those, those types of things. So you, know, you can never know exactly what's going to happen in the future, but it's not unlike every year that we do budgets. Is that you know, we've been fortunate the last year that we got those numbers prior to having to pass our budget, but in, in the past, we, we didn't get a budget all the way into October in some years before we actually started school. So um, 
uh, as most budgets are, they're built on projections and estimates, and so we try to do the best job putting those projections and estimates together. We feel, I feel comfortable that those numbers are pretty solid. However, as anything, you know, nothing's for sure, uh, especially in this economy, you never know what could happen. And so, but I think overall we feel pretty confident that uh, the numbers are going to hold true, and that, like I said, it's a it's a win-win. And it's an example where we're staying within our means. Correct. I mean, certainly, I think everyone on the board, um, although I guess I can't speak for everyone, but um, we would like to do more for the employees. I think it's not a matter of whether uh, they've earned it or not. It's a matter of living within our means. So it's a it's a prudent budget um, or a prudent settlement. Um, and um, I think it, uh, you know, with the district staying within their means, that's a very important thing going forward we're not necessarily mortgaging, mortgaging the future of, of students later that we have to educate. It's, it's basically using the funds we have now to educate the kids we have now and making sure that we don't mortgage our future. priority was the step, and if that was a good piece, that was you know, a big priority for both the union and for us because you know, we want to recognize those young teachers who um, put in time and that you know, over time they, they're rewarded for those, um, those steps over time. And so you know, we've, been, we've been trying to put as much of that as we can discussion on that. You know, I, I think it uh, would be good to say a few comments as well. I think, um, you know, being new to the board, it's uh, um, 
little bit harder to kind of have known what, what the board has discussed in, in past uh, contract negotiations, but having some experience in the past as being the finance director, um, uh, you know, it's always better to settle a contract earlier in the process as opposed to late in the process when we get closer to the start of school where, um, you know, the disruption of that educational process can start to happen potentially or um, um, the focus is not necessarily always on the educational process. So I think that's a real big positive with this. Um, I know that uh, the law of the land is important um, and uh, currently <clears throat> by us passing it at this point if we do, um, it is within the law of the land that's in place right now. Um, certainly there, um, there was a, an opportunity for the legislature um, who has a responsibility for the state of Michigan and they make, that, they make those votes. They had an opportunity to have that have immediate effect back when it originally passed. Um, either they didn't have the votes or they decided not to, <clears throat> to do that. So it's really not the, la the, the, the law of the land yet. Um, and I think it's important that we as board members do what we think, you know, we have an obligation to our district. And I think that obligation is to take a look at this contract or these contracts and decide whether it's in the best interest of the district to do them. And, and in my opinion, um, that's kind of where I'm settling on the issue is that I think this is in the best interest of Hazlitt Public Schools. I think it does a number of things for us. I think it does allow some increase in pay for new teachers who are just coming on have, and, and some of the new ones are, are extremely low pay by the time they pay now for their retirement and things like that. Health benefits, they're paying 20%, and they're almost at the poverty level by coming in and, and being a full-time teacher uh, right out of college. So it allows us to help those individuals some. Um, it is a sacrifice but from our members who um, are along the steps already and so that they won't get a pay increase this year. Um, so it is a, um, it's a point where it's a, it's a sharing of sacrifice as well. Um, and, I, and I just think as, as we look forward to um, future years, um, in many ways um, here in the state, even as a district, we, we make choices and take votes as a group. And I think those, uh, the teachers, uh, the, the paraprofessionals, and all the unions um, had a chance to, to vote on it just like when we take a vote as a legislature or as a city council or whatever, there's always some individuals who don't want the vote to go a certain way. But as we take a vote and we have majority rule, um, it does allow that voice to be heard, but not necessarily do we always get it the way we want it. Um, so what, while I, um, you know, as I, as I looked at this issue and as I, as I will vote for it, um, it's all those things put together, and I think it's in the best interest, for my, in my opinion, for Hazlitt Public Schools. And so I feel comfortable voting that way. And I do, um, uh, <clears throat> I do value everybody's opinion, and certainly uh, Rob's opinion as well. And um, I understand where he's coming from, and I, and I hope he understands where we're coming from, or where I'm coming from. So uh, I feel comfortable saying that. If, if I can tag on uh, next after what David said. I have to say, I, I have tremendous respect for Rob and for your opinion. I, too, very much have struggled with this issue of the right to work for the very same reasons that you did. However, I will be voting in support of this contract. My really, my primary, foremost reason why I am doing this is I feel as David this is really a contract that is in the best interest of our school district. It is a contract that has been diligently, hours, worked through with very well-respected administrators, staff, people that have worked very hard to put this together. I have tremendous respect also for those people. And I do think it is in the best interest of our school district I think, in my mind, the pros very much outweigh the cons with it, and so that's where my support will be tonight.
sure just briefly, I guess as the newest member, I've been attending board meetings for, um, for a while, um, but being newly elected and serving on the board, um, I just wanted to share what a great appreciation I have for the process, for the time um, that staff in particular has spent during the negotiations um, and that the, the multiple um, conversations at committee meetings and in, in closed session here with the full board. Um, uh, I, I plan to support um, this as well. Um, two big reasons for me is I do feel that it uh, allows for some stability for the school district to have um, language in place and um, showing an acknowledgement and recognition um, where we financially are able to do that to um, add steps back in and then also the timing the realignment of having the contracts more closely aligned with the actual school year um, those have all been articulated as very um, strong pluses in, in support of the district and I trust and value um, the feedback of our administrative staff in saying that this is a positive thing for our district so Absolutely right. The, you know, the, the reason why this is up before us now is because of the, the um, uh, right to work law coming into effect. And that's really, I think, caused a lot of struggle within the board. And, and um, um, this contract, I've been on the board for almost seven years now, not as long as uh, some, longer than others. It's probably the most reviewed, most discussed most debated contract in the time that I've been on, on the board. Um, my recollection is when I first joined the board that a three-year contract uh, had been entered into, so it's not uh, an unprecedented uh, move for us to have a three-year contract. Uh, granted, times have changed. Uh, and when I say that, I don't mean right to work. Ability to know that next year you're going to have more money coming in. Uh, that has definitely changed and changed the profile of how many years the contract enter into. But that's why we have a one year financial interest. Um, we also have an escape act. We have the three year collective bargaining aspect of it ends up costing the, uh, the district money. Uh, and I, I will give credit to the union on that, that, that they saw the, the problems with that too and recognized that, you know, it, it's going to hurt the kids, it's going to hurt everybody if, if this ends up costing the district money because we, in the exercise of our best judgment, have entered into a three-year commitment. And so they've agreed to build in the escape hatch if, if that comes uh, to fruition. Uh, and that was, to me, extremely important. Something that, that can't be overlooked either. So, you know, we've really debated it. We've had long discussions, uh, uh, very respectful disagreements, uh, and many agreements too. Uh, but uh, I guess the time has come to make the final decision. Any, anyone else have any more to add, or are we ready to move on?
not that we took a, any kind of a behind the scenes thing, but yeah, I got the feeling through the discussions with people who are ending up. Uh, but it, it deserves to be held in front of the, the public. And, uh, we've done that. Thank you. Uh, okay, with that, I think we'll proceed on to the uh, vote on uh, action item number six, which is a, uh, a motion that we have before us to approve the four union uh, labor agreements. Uh, all in favor of approval? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Motion carries. And that completes the action items. Uh, we have a few announcements. Uh, first of all, there is no board meeting scheduled for April 8th, so uh, be aware of that. Most of us, or if any of us, will not be here. Um, the uh, next thing is the Mid-Michigan Legislative Breakfast is scheduled for Thursday, April 18, 2013 at the Radisson Hotel in Lansing from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. The Governor's Education Summit is scheduled for April 22, 2013 at the Kellogg Center at Michigan State University from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be held here on April 22nd, 2013 at 7 p.m. Uh, again, it's April 22nd is our next one, not April 8th. Uh, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a motion and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.